Tokyo, where the pandemic is not only impacting the athletes, but journalists covering the games as well. Today, the Japanese Tourism Board gave reporters from around the world a guided tour of the city. It was the first time out and about after emerging from 14-day quarantine. Until today, they had to stay in a bubble of their hotels, the media center, and Olympic venues. That's where our own Raj Mathai joins us in his bubble. And Raj, you're on day four of the quarantine? Day four, and you know what, before I th came out here, I remember even talking with you, Jessica, I figured, okay, it's kind of a soft bubble. They're going to let us kind of go around the city. They are not. We don't want to break any rules here. A couple things we need here, a mask, like in the Bay Area, we're doing this at all times, a phone where we have to download two specific apps that track our movement, so we don't want to break our bubble, and also every day we begin with this. This is a little spit test, a COVID spit test, uh, a warning now for our viewers. It gets a little gross. Take a look. Hello from the Mathai Hotel Room. I get this question over the years. Raj, is it exciting and glamorous covering the Olympics? Absolutely, yes. However, for these first 14 days of the Tokyo Olympics, absolutely no. Before we start our day, before we can go out in town and actually get to work, we've got to take a saliva test, a COVID test. You want to see it here? I spit into the straw. It goes into this vial. I register it, and I submit it, and then I can go about my day. And I got to tell you, it takes about 10 times to spit, a lot of spit. I don't want to gross you out here, but it's kind of gross to fill up a knife saliva for the Olympic officials. So um, allow me to do my morning duty here, excuse me, while I spit. Okay, spit test is done, thankfully. My mouth is a little dry. Mask is on. We are leaving the hotel. Say goodbye, and we're heading to the broadcast center. Let's go have some fun. So here's the deal. I can't walk the streets of Tokyo until August 1st. This is what I'm missing. The biggest city in the world. About 14 million people, 37 million in the surrounding area. Tokyo is in a state of emergency. Restaurants close early, no alcohol is being served, and no gatherings. But life goes on. Oh yeah, back to my journey. So this is one of my favorite parts of the day, getting on our shuttle and heading to our broadcast center gorgeous views behind us. Again, a lot like Miami, a lot like San Francisco, a lot like New York. A lot of bridges, great skyline, and beautiful water. So it's taken about an hour since we did that initial spit test back at the Mathai Hotel Room, and we finally arrived at our NBC Broadcast Center here in Tokyo. And really the question is, why are we doing all these protocols? Obviously not to get COVID, but they're kind of keeping all of us in three separate bubbles. The journalists and support staff, the second bubble is the athletes, and the third bubble, the people of Japan safety first okay walk with me here as we finally come down the home stretch look here's lester holt our friend nightly news that's his little room in terms of broadcast room access hollywood and we are next door nbc bay area let's go inside here we are just a regular hotel room transformed into a mini broadcast studio and we're going to go outside here and there's the tokyo bay and there are the olympic rings we are ready to rock. And here we are, the Olympic rings, the Tokyo Bay, and you might also see the rainbow bridge behind me. That is just to get to work here in this balcony at our broadcast center for NBC. Jessica, uh, we miss you here. It's a little humid. I know you grew up in Miami, so you're used to the humidity, but wow. Yeah, be grateful you have short hair. It's I hot. Warned That's you. all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff's over here going, I told him. I told him. All right, Raj, thank you so much. Stay I know. safe. Je Jeff warned me. Jeff warned me. <laughs>